Before this episode begins, I want to state that this interview took place on July 21st of this year. This was before the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. With the permission of Zarmina John, we are sharing our conversation about her experience playing an Afghan mother on the United States of Al, which returns for its second season premiere this Thursday, October 7th, only on CBS. And now, for our conversation. Welcome, Zarmina Hamidi, to the Sohal Ali Show. Thank you so much for sharing some time with me this afternoon. Thank you so much, John, for having me. Uh, I must say, uh, right off the bat, I'm a fan of your work uh, as an actress on the now Emmy-nominated United States of Al uh, on CBS, the sitcom. My family and I Mm -hmm. have been huge supporters of it, and seeing your role as the main character's mother uh, has been amazing. So I want to just congratulate you on that. Thank you. Thank you. And isn't it exciting? We're already nominated for an Emmy, so uh, that's great. That was great news. Absolutely. Yes. Congratulations to you and the entire team. And uh, yeah, I just, again, thank you for your time. I'd love to just hear a little bit about how you got involved uh, with the show uh, from the very beginning. I'd love to hear the whole story. (laughs) So uh, this is how it started. My husband basically said, why don't you go for it? And um, actually, he said, why don't you do it? Um, And that's because I um, complained to him about my sisters, who I thought would be perfect for the role. Uh, I have, we're five sisters, I'm the youngest, so they always stole the spotlight, and they did all the acting, and, you know, pretending to act like old Afghan women, like family gatherings and things, so um, just seeing my sisters uh, act out like women from back home, I thought they would be perfect, Mm. so initially, when um, Hila sent us the flyer, and I also saw it on our Afghan community page, the Afghans Mm -hmm. living in D.C. area, um, I begged my sisters, I'm like, can one of you please, you know, um, (laughs) audition for this? So one of them is camera shy. The other one wasn't even thinking about it because uh, of the pandemic and all Mm. that was going on. So um, I complained to my husband and he's the one who told me, he's like, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? And I'm thinking I've never acted. Um, I'm nothing like them. Uh, So it's funny because when he told me initially, I was like, are you crazy? Uh, You know. (laughs) I am not that type. I'm not like my sisters. So then my sure. kids found out and they're like, no, you have to do this. Uh, so they all pushed me and I, I live with four men, yeah. <laughs> um, three and a half men. One is still t- 10 years old, but they all really encouraged me and pushed me to do it. Um, wow. So I was like, let's go for it. So we auditioned. Um, my older son, uh, Marwan, um, he is almost 16. Mm. He really helped me. Uh, you know, um, he helped me with the email. I emailed the casting director. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when they sent me the script to audition, he set up everything for me from like Toshak to the camera and the lighting. Oh, wow. and, um, I still remember the day we taped the audition. He he uh, he had a orthodontist appointment. And on the way there, he made me memorize my lines. Um, oh coming my back, God. he's like, yeah, he's like, you're not getting off the hook. You need to memorize these lines. <laughs> so he really pushed me. And then I came home to like a, you know, a setup, and um, they made me. They, they, you know, they. He did everything, and he's like, go change into your Afghan clothes because you're gonna do this the right way. Yeah. Um, oh he was God. really directing me. Like, <laughs> shout out to um, Marwan John. Good Marwan. boy. Good job. <laughs> Proud yeah, of you. <laughs> so I had my cheerleaders in the back. Marwan yeah. was like the director who kept yelling at me, you have to do this again. So I think we, <laughs> I don't know how many times I said those lines, but um, mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, so you who filmed, knew? <laughs> absolutely. I mean, and now obviously you booked the role and uh, mm-hmm. I, wanted, I wanted to get into, you know, how that whole process was, but it sounds like you saw the, I think I remember seeing it to this kind of wide casting call, uh, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. flyer. And, yes. um, and, and Hila Hamidi, who is now a producing, producer on the show, um, mm-hmm. who I, I actually met at the Afghan American Conference in 2018 in New York. So that's how I got to connect with her. Um, I believe, are you two related? We are. We oh. are. She's, um, I call her the young and Hamidi. She's, uh, she's, our, she's my cousin. Uh, okay. Our parents are cousins. Uh, so my parents and her dad are first cousins. Okay. Yeah, but um, she's w- much younger than me. So she calls me Emma. <laughs> sure, sure. As yes. <laughs> the Afghan respect we, is required, but yes. 
No, absolutely. Yep. So, um, and you did this, the at home recording, as it sounds, I mean, you set up the whole thing. I mean, you went all mm -hmm. the way for it, it sounds so. Um, of we course, did. Yeah. <laughs> and so from there, then I, I would love to hear kind of when you heard the news that you got the role or did they have you come out to on set to audition again? Uh, no, they called me. Um, I believe it was a Friday. They called me and I remember I told my mom, cause she was confused, like, what, what are oh. we doing? Um, she knew what I was doing, but this whole process of audition with the lighting and the setup and everything, she was just like giving me those Afghan mom looks, you know, like, okay, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, yeah. So she, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that day, yeah. like two, three days later, uh, we were just sitting and talking, my mom and I, and I got a call from Ken Miller uh, telling me that, you know, he just asked me a whole lot of questions. Mm. And then um, I think it was that same day, a few hours later, um, he called and told me that I got the part. So I wow. just sat there and I was just frozen in the chair. <laughs> I had no idea. It was something completely like, I feel like God just threw it at me from the sky, you know, like yeah. you got this <laughs> part. I, so yeah, yeah it, it was just really, um, it was surreal. I just didn't know how to feel. I was just, I was in shock. And then I told my mom, I'm like, I got the part. And she... <laughs> She just wouldn't believe it. She just um, then it registered. Know, yeah. <laughs> no, it didn't register. With oh, not even. Oh, no. no, no, because and her first question was, "What would your dad say?" <laughs> so my my father, uh, God, you know, bless his soul. He um, he left us almost ten years ago, um, and for her to find out that I got this, you know, part in a Hollywood show, it was a big. You know, it, I think yeah. it was more of a shock for her than for me. So um, her first question was, what would your dad say? <laughs> so it, it's still, you know, it, yeah. it still comes to me. And I, I think about my dad and I'm like, you know what? At this point in my life, I think he would have been very proud that mm. I got this role of Gulbashra, who's, um, you know, she's playing the mom of an interpreter. Uh, you know, I get to represent an Afghan woman mm. from back home. And what better honor than that? Mm. So, um, yeah, so I kind of told my mom wow. that. I was like, you know, this is an honorable position because I play an Afghan mother. Mm -hmm. um, just imagine um, bringing light, bringing to light an Afghan woman and that mm -hmm. a mother. You're right. Um, so when I explained to her and then I explained to her, you know, what she would be wearing, I'm like, I'm pretty sure she's going to be wearing a scarf. And then she was like, okay. <laughs> then, but um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my beautiful. My husband and yeah. kids, you know, everybody was just really excited. Uh, oh, I that bet. That, that I got. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, that, that's yeah. beautiful. And yes, what an honor and what a uh, opportunity to tell the story of so many mothers that you mentioned, like mm -hmm. like Al's mother back home, worrying, concerned, um, yeah. wondering why he's wearing shorts. She, she doesn't like it. She doesn't like. It. No, I don't like it either. <laughs> I'm always telling my kids, can we please have a day with pants like they wear shorts? <laughs> all year long i mean they wear oh. shorts when it's snowing outside so um, oh. <laughs> from that perspective you know i i could feel i mean her her reasoning is different but yeah. we don't both don't like shorts and and that's how it is like i know yeah, that so. was probably already written in but that definitely something you brought to it as well as you could relate yes <laughs> um and, yes. and you know you as an african mother as well the same caring that you have for your boys you know, having that come through the screen, on screen, mm -hmm. uh, through uh, yep. Golbasha, the character. So, uh, yes. I, as I mentioned previously, it's it's a very special thing for my family to see my mother, my father, uh, my mother as an African mother, especially. Uh, she's been a fan of yours. Mm -hmm. She's been connecting with you, and uh, it's been a really, really great to uh, follow along. Oh, thank her for me. Um, I, actually, I'm becoming her fan too because um, it's. <laughs> we connect as mothers. And, um, you know, yeah. I think that's wonderful because as women, we've been given the special gift of becoming mothers and we can share so many similarities. Mm. Uh, I, and I think that's beautiful. And, and with Afghan women, you know, I always think about how much we have to endure as, okay, like I'm here in the United States, I grew up here, um, mm. but when it comes back to being a mother, I become more of an Afghan. <laughs> So like I, I right. want to pass on the traditions and the values that I was raised with. Um, so like when I see other Afghan mothers, other Muslim mothers uh, mm -hmm. struggling, we can all really relate to each other because, you know, we, we want to give our children the best of 
what we were brought up with, the best mm -hmm. of our culture, and also the best of their American side. So we kind of have to learn to balance. And I think uh, that's why, you know, I, I think your mom sent me a message once. Um, she's saying as an Afghan mother, as a mother, I can relate to you. And, and that was really sweet of her because um, I'm glad that, that I could make a mother feel like she could relate to me. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you, you do. You, you did. And uh, I'm really glad that, you know, you were able to hope form a connection with her as well and, and make an impact on all the Afghan mothers. We've seen it, all the support that's been shown uh, for the mm -hmm. show. Not only was it renewed for a second season, but, you know, the Emmy nomination. So it's, it's quite uh, inspiring and, and hopeful to see the success and that it's resonating. Um, mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, with, with not only our community, but everyone else. Uh, in the greater yes, audience it's, it's, it's one of those shows um uh let me just tell you uh since my last child was born uh he's 10 now i hadn't watched tv just because you know <laughs> my kids were my focus like i didn't this is really embarrassing to say but i didn't know who dean norris was um oh sure <laughs> you know sure. it's like everyone who hears dean norris they get so excited and That's you know my kids bad. told me yeah yeah i'm like well i haven't watched tv how would i know um you know i hadn't heard of any of these actors you know the, the, the you know people i get to work with but um so i definitely missed out the last 10 years but for <laughs> after 10 years to go back into tv and being part of it yeah and being part of such an important show i think mm -hmm. uh, it's it's such a blessing i don't know how to describe my feelings it's like it's the kind of show where anyone can relate to mm. um just anybody you don't have to be an afghan or a muslim um, to, to, to relate to. It's not just an Afghan issue. It's like a, it's a human issue. You know, mm -hmm. you have these two best friends. One is Afghan, one is a American. They, you know, they form this bond um, over human survival, right? Mm -hmm. uh, over war. Yeah. Um, and they take care of each other. And I think that's beautiful um, because they, they really at some point connect at a human level. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of our critics fail to see that as well. Mm -hmm. um, that there's these two characters that depict humans who connect on another level. Like we mm -hmm. see beyond the war, we see a human relationship. Yes. So, um, yeah. And I, and I see that with, with Riley's family as well. You know, Art mm -hmm. is the dad, you know, he sees his kids struggling. Um, you know, uh, Lizzie, you know, she's struggling with her own issues. Mm -hmm. You know, losing a loved one to war is not easy. Um, I, I lost my father to uh, terrorists and it's, mm -hmm. it's not easy to lo lose a loved one. So. Um, I find myself relating to so many of these characters, Sorry. not just Gulbashta, but everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And that speaks to uh, the, the producers, the writers of the show. And we're so proud to have so many Afghans, Hila included, uh, at, at Absolutely. the helm uh, behind the scenes of the show. Uh, and mm -hmm. It's unprecedented, first of its kind in that regard. And uh, we, we only wish you and the rest of the program well as it, as it continues, of course. And uh, I wanted to ask Thank kind you. of, you know, let's go back to when you, after you heard the news, you know, you're in shock. Everyone's so excited. You obviously, you were in the DMV area, correct? Virginia? Yes, I'm in Loudoun County, Virginia. Okay. So <laughs> not Los Angeles where it's filmed, clearly. No, no. I had and to, I had to drive there across the country. You <laughs> drove. <laughs> yes. Yes. So uh, that's another uh, thing. So I was almost at uh, a point of, calling Ken Miller and telling him that it's not going to work out because uh, they were ready to send me tickets um, and fly me over. And uh, I, so I'm a, I'm a transplant patient. I, uh, I have kidney disease. So um, I had a transplant last year. So I'm still kind of fresh. And this pandemic didn't help because it literally mm -hmm. started right after my surgery. Mm -hmm. So I talked to my transplant team because vaccines had just uh, been out. And mm -hmm. uh, at that point, I think it was... Uh, it was like the initial phase where they were vaccinating people over 75. Mm -hmm. um, so I called my doctors and my transplant team and I told them, can I get vaccinated early because I need to fly to Los Angeles. And I didn't tell them why. I said I got a job, but I didn't tell them what I was doing. <laughs> so my doctor was like, I'll write them a note and tell them mm -hmm. what the issue is. If you could mm -hmm. work from home, uh, if they can, I was like, no, it's not that kind of work. No. <laughs> I have to physically be there. Right. She's like, I'm not letting you go. She's like, you're not allowed uh, to fly. So um, oh boy. I was, I, I mean, I was like, I was disappointed, but at the same time, you know, my health is also important. Uh, 
So I hung up with them and I picked up the phone. My husband's sitting right next to me. I'm like, uh, well, I'm just going to call them and tell them to find mm-hmm. some, you know, whoever they had on the list next after me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just going to tell. I didn't want to waste their time either. So sure. my husband was like, well, they told you not to fly. I was like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, well, but you can drive. I'm That's like, are you right. crazy? So he's <laughs> like, I'm going to take you. I'm going to drive <gasps> you there. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. So I called back my transplant team and I said, can what? Can I at least drive there? She's like, we don't recommend it, but you know, we'd rather you drive than fly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I that thought, was. I thought uh, you would have to keep it hidden, even that part. But no, I guess. If, I mean, if you're not the one driving the whole time, that sort of thing. Yeah. So driving like, yeah, to cool. California, my husband just drove the whole time. Uh, we had to, um, my sister-in-law, luckily, you know, we're surrounded by loving family here. They watch the kids. So, um, you know, we left the kids with uh, my husband's sister. Uh, and then um, we were able to go, you know, not worrying about the kids. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I trust her more than I trust myself. So um, I was just really relaxed uh, with the kid situation. So mm-hmm. we just drove to California. Yeah. In the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> yes, you did. Absolutely. Yeah. And you made it to uh, the Warner Brothers studios, I'm guessing directly there and then figured out where to go. I was going to ask, you know, kind of what that experience was like too. Um, as you mentioned, kind of your first time acting on screen, you know, being on a set, that sort of thing. Like, do you, what do you remember from that? I remember everything because it was such a special trip. Um, it's uh, initially, well, initially when we got to Los Angeles, oh, we had to quarantine for five days. Um, so yeah, they, uh, right. you know, they had booked us a hotel and I stayed there for five wow. days. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, after I think three days I had to do, I had to do a few COVID tests, um, mm-hmm. before going into, so they're very strict and very careful mm-hmm. about, um, allowing people in the studios. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I had never stepped foot into a studio. So this was my very first time I walk in and I'm in complete, uh, I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect. So right. I look around, there's like this uh, studio and then the Ellen show, uh, the Ellen studio is right next to it. So, oh. <laughs> so like when I'm in the parking lot, I'm just looking, I'm like, maybe I'll see her somewhere. I'm, I'm yeah. a big fan. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, sure. maybe I'll see Ellen somewhere. Yeah. yeah but um, <laughs> Same lot. So I, sure. I walked in. Yeah. There, she, she's like, her studio is literally right next to it. That's crazy. So um, I thought that was special. Um, I called my kids and because they are Ellen fans too. I was like, look where I am. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but when I walked into the studio, uh, it was amazing. Uh, and mm. this is why they definitely deserve that Emmy nomination because the set design was, um, mm. uh, I mean, as I walk in, I look, there's like the American setup, like the American mm-hmm. home. Sure. And then you see the Afghan home. And, uh, you know, here's, you know, I look to one side, I'm American. I look to the other side, I'm in Afghanistan. So I think yeah. They did an amazing job with, with the set. So um, it's, uh, you know, I saw Gulbashra's room, the, 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 uh, the living room. I mean, they mm-hmm. were down to the point with so much detail. Mm-hmm. Um, so many things that they had collected that uh, some of the things shocked me. Um, I saw the, uh, the modern festival. Is that what you call yes, it? Yes, Awang yes, yes. We call it Awang Dasta. Yes, yes you know? <laughs> absolutely. The modern, yep, yep. The modern festival. So yeah. if you go to, uh, we're, we're in Kandahar, and then you, uh, every household has one. It's a gold. It's like made out of, it's not gold, but it's like but, bronze. Um, yeah. Every household has one. And it's usually displayed in like the living room where everybody sits. I don't know why, but I, I saw it in so many homes when I was younger, you know, yeah. five feet. And then I saw it and I just like, like my heart just smiled. I'm like, they really went to the details of uh, creating the set. Like, you know, they got the modern pasta, you know? It's yes. Like, and it, it looked Afghan. It reminded me of back home. Mm. Uh, we had one. Everybody had one. Um, I saw that. And then I saw the decorative. Um, uh, uh, sorry, this word just slipped out of my head. Uh, the uh, serving um uh, uh-huh. Trays. Yes. <laughs> Our classic. Yeah. Department. Yep. Yeah. So decorative. Like, um, so they had uh, uh, the the room where the Gulbashta's living room. Mm-hmm. They had it uh, where um, I don't know if you've seen like you haven't been to Afghanistan, right? I have not. No, I you plan on it. So, Hopefully one day, inshallah. Inshallah, one day. Yes, yeah. we can all go. <laughs> um, I'd love to take my kids. They beg me. Um, yeah, but good. when you yeah. go, yeah, <laughs> when you go to um, like a 
I, I know they have it in Kandahar all the time, but I think mm-hmm. in Kabul too. And mm-hmm. um, I didn't see it in Kabul because I went to one of the like the fancier apartments. But um, in Kandahar, they used to have uh, these shelves built in the wall. It was just like one shelf, like a big shelf. Uh-huh. And then on the shelf, they would display everything in the in the living room, so that mortar pestle would be there. The decorated, uh, you know, yes. serving trays would be there. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. So they had made exactly you on know, the shelves. On yes. the show, like it's on the set. Um, if you see uh, my episode, in episode three, you don't really yep. see it. it's behind me. I don't know if you can see it well, but definitely. Um, so it was just so detailed just to see that set, and then I saw yeah. the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> the curtains that were hanging on the I mean I saw an exact replica when I went to Kabul back in 2004 I okay. went to my parents cousin's house and exactly the same oh, curtains wow. were hanging on, oh, their, on their window <laughs> so when I saw that it was, the same it was like they really they really went into detail so everything you know from the toshak to the uh, you know yes. the, the mats that we sit on um, mm-hmm. to the pillows to the rugs um, to the wall hangings I mean unbelievable they they did they did a lot of work in that and then um, I saw uh, Fatima Hosseini's painting or or one of her art pieces yeah. I think it was hanging in Hasina's room if, if I remember uh-huh. but the fact that they actually got like Afghan artists work and yes play that it meant a lot it meant a lot um, so much so much yeah. of what they've done including as you mentioned this, the beautiful accurate set you described is so mm-hmm. inherently Afghan. And, and as you mentioned, uh, also, I was going to ask if you also saw the set of your on-screen daughter, uh, Hasina, played by the great uh, Sitara Atayi, uh, her mm-hmm. room. Is it the same or is it it's probably a different layout? It's a different room. Okay. It's, a, it, it's like it, they've made it into a, like a bedroom. I, it's right. It was right next to um, the living room. Um, yeah, it was it was it represented the room of a medical student because Sitara is a medical student and um you know they had the bed they had the shelf with the books they had a microscope a small microscope oh, there a laptop wow. so it's a, and then it, everything had an afghan touch so like her bed set mm-hmm. you know looked very afghan um the wall hangings um you know the rugs uh, you know they made it really believable mm-hmm. um and that takes a lot of work a lot of research a lot of um shopping around and, and finding all these material and asking around and even on set they kept asking you know this this is this you know representative yes. of how it'd be so i really appreciated that everybody in the production team were very careful about representing us in every aspect mm-hmm. whether it's clothes whether it's um the the, the set design um mm-hmm. it's everything i just um, even makeup artists you know like the mm-hmm. the lady would style my hair. Like I, I told her how to style it. Like you know, yeah. like halas, you know. It's like yeah. the way they wear their hair under the uh, scarf, that, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you know, to that point, they were very, very particular. Uh, mm-hmm. There, there's so much focus on details. So I, you know, I, I left smile. Honestly, it's like I appreciated every single person on that set, uh, nice. the, the production team, because mm-hmm. they really um, did a great job. Absolutely, and and many congratulations to them and, and clearly the work was uh well spent and hard work uh, well done mm-hmm. and uh so mm-hmm. how how many days did you film on set um i think i filmed like the actual filming was just one day i okay. I, I filmed two episodes um one was right. aired the other one was was not um okay. yeah but um we did a rehearsal the day before um so mm. total total i think i was in the studios for three days gotcha yeah. gotcha you rehearsed for both and then you you filmed each one gotcha mm-hmm. um and then uh you mentioned hair and makeup and then uh wardrobe as well did they did you have to bring any of your own afghan clothing did they have all of that ready there the wardrobe coordinator she, she's amazing um she called me and told me uh, asked a lot of questions and uh you know the 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 white uh, uh, um, we call it kota nine pashto. She knew what it was. She kept saying, you know, um, bring your extra kotanas. You know, she, you know, oh, wow. so, you know, <laughs> she's like, bring those, bring she extra knew. scarves. She knew, yeah. I, Hila and and uh, you know had really prepared her. I think she's she'd ask oh. Hila a lot of questions about how we dress. So when I went there, I took things with me, but mm-hmm. I didn't um, I I didn't use them because she had everything prepared. 
uh, they, she had gone out of her way and bought scarves, like, you know, the mm. chadar, the, that material. Yes. Um, they had gotten clothes. So I took clothes, um, a few pairs from my house. And, uh, you know, a lot of Afghan women, they wear like, would you buy a dress uh, here, like maybe like a Tommy Hilfiger or whatever branded dress here. And then you would wear it, like the older Afghans, they would wear it with, you know, the white tumban or, you know, kotana. Mm. Um, <laughs> So um, I took some of those dresses with me. I thought they would come to use. And sure. she looked at them. She's like, this is not very Afghan. <laughs> oh. So, um, yes, yeah, so I, I find it so cute because she had found like, yeah. actual uh, like, clothes that women would wear in Afghanistan. I mean, I didn't own those sure, uh, sure. besides like the fancy Afghan clothes that we wear on Eid and, you know, special events. So um, Traditional clothing, you're right. But this is yeah. like authentic this is very authentic kind of i mean it it went back wow. to like the real the real deal um like if i would go to kandahar or mm -hmm. even you know kabul the, i see the the elder uh women they would be wearing what they had on set for me not what, what mm. i took with me so <laughs> yeah so i i just found it amazing wow. how um how they were so prepared they were really prepared so um yeah, the, the scar from, you know, in that one episode, the clothes, everything they provided. Mm -hmm. I didn't even wear like the the, the uh, pants that I took with me. They had made it for me. They took my size early on and they had mm -hmm. made it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's amazing. And honestly, yeah, it yeah. shows in, in all the the costumes and, and all the set design uh, in general. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, I think it was an interesting part of the way they filmed the show. And you probably noticed this too, is that, since there was no uh, audience, studio audience, they were able to get very creative with kind of the angles they showed. And, um, you know, you know, we can see uh, the, the little like Kabul or Afghanistan restaurant that like uh, cousin Zubair is like sitting in. So like mm -hmm. these kind of angles and such were kind of shows off the greater set, I think um, in a way was a, was a great opportunity to take to, to show those off given the, 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 the way they had to film the show. Yes, absolutely. I, I think it was wonderful. I got lucky because there was no live audience since I'd never acted. So um, I'm like, well, that would have been you know, interesting. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told I told my husband, I'm like, I initially I was like, you know, you do these. I mean, that's how they did it right before the pandemic. It was yes. in front of a la, you know, live mm -hmm. audience, but it didn't register until like we were driving to California and I'm looking at him like I think they usually do these with, you know in front of live audience right uh, so I think that's the only time I got nervous I'm like what if there actually is a live audience oh, but when sure. I work there thank god you know right right <laughs> I'm like, okay I'm saved <laughs> you could do it as many times yeah. no <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh yeah you had I, so I'm trying to understand how it was because you were obviously your uh Golbashra is like watching from her laptop skyping with uh, Awal mm -hmm. Mir from back home. Um, so were you, was that really just like a camera you were looking into? Uh, yes. You were giving your lines to? Yes, I, I was looking at the camera. Well, I was holding the camera like, like you know, how I'm holding my phone right now. Uh, like I was holding uh. the actual camera and then, you know, it was a really heavy camera, but I mean, I wasn't holding it. The cameraman was behind it, oh, but I had right. to pretend that uh, lens or that, uh, what is it called? The screen, the, the initial part, the out, <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. don't know the I don't know the term for it, but no, yeah, yeah, you you were you were probably look like handheld yeah. kind of. I believe that was yeah. the look. Yeah, I yeah. had to pretend that was my cell phone. Yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> well, good thing they, yeah, I was gonna say good thing they had someone you didn't have to just like hold this big camera. Yeah, oh, um, <laughs> yeah. They they really thought it like really well. I mean, Nikki, uh, Nikki, uh, she she directed. Mm -hmm. no no Nikki actually Laurie. no the, uh, or, Nikki Laurie yeah she directed mm -hmm. the uh fifth episode um that I you know I had done but mm -hmm. um it was Mark Sandrowski who did the episode that they actually aired yeah mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. but the concept was the same I had to hold the camera got yeah. you got you did you get to meet and interact with any of the your fellow cast members while you were there I did I did I met Adir actually no no i met uh dean norris first and um again oh, wow. this is really embarrassing because they introduced me to him and uh there was another dean who was uh, the uh, he's one of the assistant directors who you know okay. i was working with and then um so uh, this is like the day before this is the rehearsal um uh -huh. they uh so dean norris he was sitting there and she because we're all wearing masks and uh, right. you can't really see i did some research on some of the actors before i went there 
but uh you know it's different when when you're like right there in person yeah and I then behind mask never, you yeah. can see yeah and because i had not watched breaking bad or any of his <laughs> other i couldn't recognize his voice right because sometimes if you don't see their face you recognize them by their voice sure but in, <laughs> this was so embarrassing because she uh, i was introduced and they're like oh this is dean and i thought he was one of the directors so i'm like hi dean how are you nice to meet you but i had no idea it was dean, dean norris oh so, um, man <laughs> i was so embarrassed afterwards because when he took teams. off his mask yeah and they actually then... did uh, you know then i'm like oh man that's him because my kids had told me <laughs> yeah your boys so, are like mom come on it's breaking bad how do you not you know <laughs> i have a family of huge fans of dean norris um my oh, nieces man. are like diehard crazy fans of him um so uh they're like please get us his picture but then i i didn't get a chance to <laughs> You know, oh, in a sure. pandemic, you don't get to hang out. <laughs> right, right. So, you guys are uh, yeah. distance, just there to work, yeah. of course. Um, yeah. So, so I met Adir afterwards. Uh, he came um, oh, and wow. uh, such a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, very loving. And, you know, just a, he was just, an, I mean, they're so like, um, initially before going, uh, you know how we're told, you know, Hollywood, we see Hollywood through a different perspective than the people mm -hmm. that are actually part of it so when you think hollywood you're like oh man you know crazy yeah stuck up, show you know, business shiny people. yeah yeah sure but these were like like humans you know like mm. really down-to-earth people um i felt overdressed because um when i the very first day when i went to the studio like you're thinking hollywood you need to dress up for all this makeup and everything so i walk in and everybody is in like normal clothes <laughs> yeah. you know jeans sweats whatever shorts <laughs> and i'm like looking around i'm like why am i dressed up i usually <laughs> don't dress up at home so it's like i oh, did it but, extra because yeah. i was going into like a you know I was in hollywood i was going into a studio that's right so, and i was going to be working with these actors and um I didn't know what to expect, but when I walked in and I saw these, these are very down to earth, normal people that are just really nice. Um, I met Parker oh. Young on our lunch line. I was standing oh, uh, to nice. get lunch. Yeah, he came behind me. So uh, I looked at him, of course, masked again. I, sure. And I'm like, are you Parker? He's like, <laughs> yeah. And then we started talking and I told him, oh, that, man. Know, I'm Zermin, I play Gulbashta. So um, yeah, so it, it, everybody there is just really, really nice. It was, I felt so welcomed and taken care of, honestly, mm. with, um, from actors to, um, you know, the directors to mm -hmm. just everyone involved. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. I, I, that's, that's really sweet. That's really great to hear. I honestly, from hearing and speaking to, you know, the producers and, and Mahyad and Reza to, to fellow actors, uh, such as Wali Habib, you know, it, it really speaks true that this was really a heart uh, driven, you know, production. Mm. Yes, um, yes. And speaking of speaking of Wali Habib, um, he the day I finished shooting, he came up to me. He was, a, a, you know, I had, I've never met him, sure. and he, you know, started talking to me. And I, I told him, I like, I guess they they liked my performance. So Sitara John, she came. He, uh, you know, he was there. I met her earlier, okay. but uh, I, I didn't know who he was. And then he, he's like, oh, I'm one of the actors. I play Zubair, and uh, just such a, I don't know. It's like they treated me like i was this experienced actress and i hey. I'm here i'm like this is where my very first time i've ever done this so uh, i don't know i felt like uh rings true I think out of <laughs> out of everybody i just feel like i was the one um i mean i am a complete outsider going in there you know it's uh like everybody has some sort of uh experience right exposure to whatever from lights to camera to just this whole mm -hmm. world of acting i was like a a completely new person and the and the fact that they treated me so well uh you know it's like you know they 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 appraised my work i was just yeah. i was i mean i'm still in shock honestly like it's hard to believe <laughs> i mean honestly watching it is it's hard to believe it's your first time you know honestly and and i think i was going to ask you know as you're getting there and you know you have maybe your nerves about you know what's going to happen um was it was it the welcoming you know kindness of everyone that like you know allowed you to calm down and maybe focus and, and enjoy the process or was there some advice given to you did you ask for advice i did not ask anybody's advice i just like jumped into it it's um i was in i think the encouragement from my family helped a lot mm. um just uh, you know my husband being by my side uh, the kids mm. you know they were really cheer like they were my cheerleaders you know they were really um you know pushing me and um 
and my husband you know he kept telling me he's like don't be nervous don't be nervous and mm. i'm like i'm not nervous that was the strange part usually when i'm not wow. nervous about something mm -hmm. i do i don't know what i'm getting myself into like i i wasn't yeah. nervous yeah. and and that shocked me too i'm like why am i not nervous it's, <laughs> i still question like why was i i wasn't nervous at all which is really strange i mean um, in in some way you know you felt you know like you said this was a a message or from wherever that that you were you're meant to, to do this part to, to do this work i really i really am start, like i really believe that because um like god has a plan for me i don't know it but he definitely gave me this uh this responsibility like it re like he really did and i feel like i need to excel in it i because um I don't know if you saw uh, the um, United States of Al. They had the, you know, the Instagram post about me, and in there, yes. they asked for a fun fact. And when my kids read that, they're like, "This is not a very fun fact." I'm like, "But I just wanted people to know, right?" Um, I, I think where it came from. The, yeah. I don't know. So um, let me remind you. It's. Um, I remember the so post, they, but yeah, I'm missing the fun fact. Yeah, yeah. So um, in the fun fact, I said that I was made fun of in seventh grade for representing my culture. Um, That's right. And I never, it, it just never stopped me. It never uh, discouraged me from continuing to represent my mm. culture and my people. And the fact that I get to do it on national TV uh, today, it, it, it means a lot. It's just a whole different feeling. Um, and I think that's what it was. It's like that in seventh grade, I was a 13 year old, I get up on stage and I'm wearing Afghan clothes mm -hmm. uh, because I don't know if, if you participated. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of schools have these international nights or international days or whatever, where they, sure. you know all the kids. So we're a very diverse um, county. Or, right. Or yeah. Northern Virginia is just very diverse. So I, um, our school had this uh, heritage night every year, mm -hmm. um, and so in sixth grade, um, you know, that was my first year in middle school when I went. Um, of course, you know, I didn't know what was going on. I got to watch other people. And then seventh grade, I was like, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to represent my country and my people. Um, so we, I wasn't allowed to dance on stage to do like, you know, an Afghan dance. Okay. But I participated in the fashion show. Oh, so wow. I wear Afghan clothes. I go on stage. And as soon as I walk on stage, this, like the whole audience start laughing. And, and these are, I mean, we're talking about middle schoolers. So, um, you know, they started laughing and I froze and I just stood there. I'm like, okay. These kids are laughing at me. And this was not just a laugh. This was like pointing fingers and laughing hysterically mm. at me. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't know, like for, for two, three seconds, I, I didn't know whether I should cry, whether I should mm. run off the stage, mm. what I should do. So I just um, decided to just continue with what they told me to do. And I got off stage, but um, it really, like I felt humiliated. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, it's like, you can't blame these children because they're not exposed, <laughs> right? They're not exposed to, right. they're not exposed to, and, and back then, this is back in the early 1990s. Um, you right. know, you didn't see a lot of foreigners. Uh, Afghans were just, you know, starting to immigrate. Um, um, exactly. Yeah. And, and to get up there in Afghan clothes at something mm -hmm. that they have never seen um, just to be different, you know, just to be a mm -hmm. different person than them. Um, that in itself is like, these kids are curious and their response was probably just, let me laugh at this person because mm. they're not like us. They just and yeah, I think don't know. That, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that that experience had a really big impact on me. And, mm. and I feel like till today, mm -hmm. I look back and I'm like, you know, um, we need to have more exposure to mm -hmm. others. We need to have more mm -hmm. exposure to um, foreigners, to immigrants, to refugees from, from anywhere. Um, and the more we normalize these, the more these kids growing up in America will learn that, okay, we are all part of a melting pot and it's yes. not just us, it's everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes America beautiful. It's, it's the fact, the fact that we are fabric and that threads, those threads are different. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you look at a yeah. colorful fabric, it's beautiful than just a bland one. Right. That's how I see it. I'm like, so we're true. Just a, a fabric of beautiful threads and, and that's different who we are. colors, so, patterns. Yes. Mm -hmm, that's yeah. a, so that's I, a I mean, good analogy. Yeah. It's, that's what I tell my children too. And my kids are like, uh, when they, so I, I homeschooled them for a few years. Okay. And then in middle school, I was like, okay, it's time for them to go to, because I, I got sick and I was like, it's time to send them to public school. And when they went, uh, their middle school is very diverse. I mean, there's just, kids from all over the world in their school 
Cool. Um, all of a sudden, I saw, I hear their friends calling each other Habibi, you know? Oh, uh, my God. And then God. they say salam, you know? Uh, and then you, I hear one kid saying, Bacham, like oh, my son. What? <laughs> so, like, yeah, my kids go into the school and they start teaching these kids, um, oh, you know, salam. God. And, you know, and because they, they also went to Islamic school. So, you know, words mm-hmm. like Habibi and you know, these words. Yes. The so now you see, Middle yeah, like community. you see all these kids, you know? <laughs> Yeah, they're like, you know, you have, wow. you, know, you have the white kids, you have the black kids, you have the Indians, the Afghans. Yep. I mean, there's so many and they all use common language. You know, you oh, yeah. see this like white non-Muslim kids come up to you and say salam, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my so it's God, amazing, I, would, you know? I would have freaked out. That would have been just a mind-blowing moment, but that's beautiful. I mean, yeah. shouts out to your boys. I mean, for, for being uh, proud of their, of their heritage and sharing yeah, that. I mean, and thank you. I think, you know, it's, it, it took that, I feel like it took that one hurt for me mm. back in seventh grade. Mm. To, and, and that was my goal. Like when I had my children, um, I, I made it a point that they have to grow up appreciating everyone, mm. um, whatever your background is, whatever your roots are. Uh, if you see them, sometimes they're wearing like the long Arab thobes, you know, and then they're, they're wearing mm. Afghan clothes. I have had, I've put them in Indian clothes. I put them in shorts suits like whatever because you know that's who we are we're, we're human right i love it um, em- yeah embracing well everyone and like you absolutely. said yeah that's what makes yeah. the melting pot greater cultures now, i'm just glad to hear you all have this uh, where you are the, the this welcoming in a way you know diversity you know we're, we're, so we're blessed. here yeah and in indiana you know it although our city is a college town so we have a good amount of it here um, uh-huh. But in, in widespread in the greater state, not so much. But um, I think, as you mentioned, you know, representation such as United States of Al uh, is so important and it has been important. And, you know, imagine if you had a show like this when you were in seventh grade, when I was. And so if anything, it's 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 a, yeah. it's a, just a start for where yes. we need. To I mean, our, our, the, the kids, all kids need it, like even adults need it. I, I see a lot of posts of uh, like on Twitter and everywhere how mm-hmm. these uh People are saying they're yeah. learning so much. They're learning so much about the Afghan uh, culture through Al. Um, and I yeah. think it's, it's amazing. You know, these mm-hmm. are, I, I don't think like if I, as an Afghan, just um, go up to somebody and, um, you know, start talking, I feel like it won't have the same impact that this show has had on so many people because they're, you know, sure, yeah, there's, they're using so many actors and so many avenues I mean, teach. just the story. I mean, a military family, really, it surrounds the, the Dugan family, right? I mean, mm-hmm. and so that being kind of, as Reza puts it, we kind of just sneak Al in there and then, you know, his family and that representation, um, it's, mm-hmm. it's a tale of, of humanity in, in both yeah. regards, in both cultures, uh, what is mm-hmm. shared and this friendship yes. between Al and, and Riley. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, as we look forward to uh, season two, which I believe premieres October, seventh uh what what are you looking forward to as far as uh your involvement and just the show overall i am um i am wishing the show um great success i think i think they've already achieved it um i think it's it's definitely has become many many uh, uh so many americans favorite uh and 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 that's they've definitely achieved their purpose but I'm wishing them many more seasons ahead. Um, it is a Chuck Lorre show. So, um, you know, lots of hope, right? <laughs> and uh, there's, you know, we have amazing writers in that, in that group. Um, that, that whole, you know, from, you know, Dave to, to Maria, to, to our Afghan writers that are part of it, you know, to Reza and, um, you know, Boom Studios. It's like, mm-hmm. there's s- such a diverse involvement that mm-hmm. I, I have no doubt this show will succeed. Um, I'm just wishing them a lot of success, and I um, I can't wait to get uh, yeah. the the script for 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 Gul you know? I have, at this point I don't know they're they're still writing. I'm not sure how many episodes um, I am in. Um, I, uh, I I don't know anything at the moment. All I know is that you know we got season two, and that Gul will definitely be in season two. Um, but we'll just have to wait and find out how many episodes. And um, I'm just waiting for my script. Well, inshallah, maybe I mean, inshallah you will get your script and, and get there. Uh, maybe by plane. 
hopefully this time i, I am vaccinated there we go <laughs> <I'm> vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> yes yes um, we yeah go. we my husband and i talked they were like this time i'm going by plane he has to stay back yes. with the kids because uh you know, <laughs> I feel bad for my sister-in-law. She's she's helped us out so much with the, like the kids always end up at her house when we have to go somewhere. But um, you know, <laughs> so well, uh, this time you know, that's family. They're going to be going back to school. Uh, yeah, you know, in person Absolutely. physically. So mm-hmm. somebody has to stay back. Yeah, one of the parents. So um, yeah. I'll, if 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 they do call me back, I'm going to be going alone and flying this time. <laughs> well, I want to give. Uh, on behalf of the audience of the show and its supporters, I want to thank your family uh, for supporting you and a lot, you know, helping you uh, and and driving you for this endeavor. And, and thank you uh, for again uh, representing us on screen in such a beautiful thank way. Thank you, and I really appreciate you giving me the time um, to speak speak my heart out. <laughs> I you know I I wanted to share the seventh grade story because I think yeah. um, when. Initially, when when I got the Gulbashra part, I it didn't it didn't hit me until um, like I just I didn't remember my seventh grade story until mm-hmm. it was time like it was closer time for them to air the episode that I'm in, and uh, literally I think it was like two three days uh, before the episode episode mm-hmm. three the one I'm in it just it just came to me out of nowhere and I'm like you know it's so weird because you know back then I was just on stage in front of you know, maybe a few hundred kids uh, and teachers. And here I am going to be the same Afghan woman wearing a scarf, representing an Afghan woman in front of millions. Prime of time audience. national Prime television. Prime time TV, exactly. So like, um, that was big. <laughs> who could have imagined? I mean, that's just, there, there's a yeah. story of, of inspiration if there was ever and, and, and to many more uh, representate, representative moments. Um, Thank you. For you. Thank you so much, Sayal John. Thank you. It's it's been an honor and a pleasure, and uh, to many more uh, conversations. Uh, and many salams to you and your family. And I Thank hope you have you. a great rest Thank of you. your. Thank you. My salams to you guys as well, and your your family. And uh, you're doing wonderful on your shows. I've I've watched uh, I've watched maybe not all, but um, some of them, and I I, I love uh, your interviews. I, I really do. Thank Thank you so Thank much. You. It means a lot to me. Um, have a good rest of your week. Full uh, office. Thank you. Full office. Real quick, before you click away, thanks so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Click right here to subscribe to my channel for all future videos and click right here to check out this video over here. Have a great one.